Dude, John Wayne's turning into a straight up villain in this movie. Hey guys, Madison here, back for another Film Friday, and it is time for my Western of the Month. I'm so excited. This month, I am watching Red River, starring John Wayne. Cannot tell you how many times I have had this movie requested, and I've always told people it's on my list. I'll get to it, I promise. And today's finally that day. It's been a little bit since I've watched a John Wayne movie on here. Not too long. I think it was back in February that I watched The Cowboys. But I have been thoroughly enjoying my journey through John Wayne's Western filmography. It's, it's happening slowly, but surely. I'm trying to space them out a little bit so I don't overwhelm people with too much Wayne at once. But there hasn't been one yet that I did not enjoy. I've enjoyed them all, and so I'm really looking forward to watching this one. I know absolutely nothing about it. I haven't even looked at the synopsis, so I'm going into this one completely blind. I just know that it's another Western starring John Wayne, and it must be much beloved because a lot of people have asked for it. So I'm really excited, guys. I have a little bit of like extra excitement when I go into these knowing absolutely nothing because I don't know, it's just the mystery of it all. I get a little bit of extra excitement. So without further ado, guys, it's time to watch the movie. So let's jump in and let's check out Red River. Harry Carey Sr. and Harry Carey Jr. Those names keep popping up in the Westerns for sure. Early tales of Texas, huh? Okay, so Texas. Dunson here says he's leaving the train. Are you leaving? I am. I watched the land south of here since we left the salt fork. It's good land, so I'm going south where it is. You're too good a gun for me to let you leave the train now. I'm too good a gun for you to argue with. <laughs> I decided last night. I decided too. I love you. I want to be with you. Run now. It's too much for a woman. Put your arms around me, Tom. So he met a girl on the wagon train. I'll send for you. You come? Awesome. Is he really going to send for her? I think he will. My mother's. Going to be rough striking out on their own. Especially if they do get attacked by Indians. They're going to be very outnumbered. What river do you reckon that is? The Red River, I think. But is that's Texas on the other side. Uh-oh. That's not... Just about where the wagon train would be. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> it's not the wagon train, is it? Take us hours to get back there. Should have took her along. Oh my gosh. Now I'm wondering if that girl's even gonna be alive. <laughs> that's so sad. <laughs> he should have taken her with him. We could have been wrong about that smoke. Oh, she might have got away. No, I wasn't. Oh my gosh, I would be so scared. Leave your rifle. Oh goodness. Oh no. Dang it, guys. The tragedy wasted no time in this movie. Next morning, they want a sign of an engine. Oh my goodness. Who's this? Did he survive the attack on the wagon train? Burning it. Smoking. How'd you get away? Smelling. They were burning everything. He's plumb out of his head. People were screaming. I wouldn't do that again. I just wanted to find out where you... Don't ever trust anybody till you know him. Now, how'd you get away? It's following my cow. And then I saw him. Well, it looks like we'll have to take you along. So does he just have one cow left? I know he lost. I saw a couple of them laying in the background of the other scene. We're in Texas. It feels good to me. Welcome to Texas. This is where we start growing good beef. Who does it belong to? To me. Someday that'll all be covered with good beef. I'll put a mark, a brand on it. To show their mind, too. What kind of a mark? Like this. Like the banks of a river. Be the Red River brand. A cool name. It works. 
Where's the first one? I see a D for Dunson, but my name's Matthew. I'll put an M on it when you earn it. Uh-oh. Somebody already lives here. Remain here in Mondiego's land. You are welcome for a night. Are you Diego? No, senor. I'm Where is he? At his home across the river. Tell him that all the land north of that river is mine. Oh, but the land is his. Well, I'm taking it away from him. Others have tried. And you've always been good enough to stop him? I'm sorry for you, sir. And there we go. <laughs> Tell him what I said. Take your friend's horse. We'll bury him. And there we have the beginnings of a land war. <laughs> How'd you know what he was gonna draw? By watching his eyes. Remember that. I will. I want to know where Tom got all this experience from, because didn't it say it was like the 1850s? So no civil war yet. I wonder if he was like a trapper or something and he's already been out west for a while, learning how to fend for himself. Turn him loose. They're gonna get away. Wherever they go, they'll be on my land. That's quite a claim. Give me 10 years and I'll have that brand on the gates of the greatest ranch in Texas. How's he gonna fence it all? 10 years and I'll have the Red River D on more cattle than you've looked at anywhere. It takes work, it takes sweat, it takes time, lots of time. Well, we've had our 10 years and more. About 14. Near to 15. What? We just skipped like 14 years? Dan, there isn't a head worth a plug three cent piece. Kids done grown up. Unless we can move them, I'm broke. There's no market for cattle in Texas. In the range. Then I'll take them where there is a market. Missouri? Yeah. Did you figure out the best way to get him there? Sensava, then Meridian, and along the Brazos. That's the long way around. Going that way, why we get two extra crossings? You're not going. How do you know the water's well, good? I, I let a patrol that way. Had me going on sheer drive. You think it's worth? What are you mumbling about? <laughs> well, I might be able to persuade him. It might be just the time of year when old Cookie like I change the scenery could be persuaded. It might be that already persuaded because he happened to quit this morning. Might be we could persuade you to drive the chuck wagon. Might be, Mr. Dunson. Matt. Drop a map of that country we were talking I about. Did. No, it's only dead. <laughs> Matt's always one step ahead of him now. He's learned the game. That look on his face when he was talking about the cattle. He's afraid. I'm scared too. But I've been here watching and seeing and seeing what? Seeing a man fighting. And then come the war while you was away. He learned that a ranch ain't only beef, but it's money. But the war took all the money out of the South. He's just been waiting for you to head the hood north. Now, we could make it. I'm glad you come home. Why did he leave? Did he leave to fight in the war? And another Meeker. Turn him loose. Hold it. Put a brand on him. He's wearing a Meeker iron. I can't see it. Put the iron on all of them, Keeler. I think Meeker might be real pleased to see our brand on his stock. That I'll argue with Meeker. Guess that land war never happened, huh? He just kind of took it over. I hear you're making a drive, Dunson. Yeah, we're going to Missouri. Cumberland, a neighbor of mine, drove 3,000 head to the Red River. When he got across, the Missouri border gangs jumped him, stole a herd, killed all his men. Ooh. But nobody's gonna take my cattle. I don't want anybody to take mine either. I hear that some of my brand has wandered over this way. Mind if we look your herd over? I do mind. You'd stop us? Yeah, we Can't would. Can't you hold that horse still? <laughs> Maybe I should introduce you two before Who are you, you? Cherry Valance. We've heard of you. I say you're good with a gun. Still want to stop us? Yeah. Matt is unfazed. All right, we rounded up some of your stock and some of Diego's and some of everybody else's around here. I'll drive him to Missouri and give you $2 a head when I get back. All right, suits me. Mr. Meeker, I changed my mind about working with you. I'd like to go with you to Missouri. I don't know if I trust that guy. Well, wages are $10 a month. We lose the herd, you lose your wages. Fair enough. All right, good luck. That guy rubs me the wrong way. I don't know if I want him on the team. <laughs> Take it, I'm hired. You're hired. Yeah, I'm with Matt. I don't approve. Bad feeling about that dude. It's a good looking gun you were about to use back there. Can I see it? Maybe you'd like to see mine. Go ahead, try it. Go on, keep it going. You'd be Matthew Garth, wouldn't you? You're as good as they say you are. Got a reputation. Maybe they will get along. Say, I could take that personal. Yeah, and I could take the end of your nose off just as easy. Man of your age stealing sugar. Go on, get the rest of that stuff. Man, he threw that thing with precision. God, God, I like me with a good hand on the bed. What in bag? Oh, that was my store chief. Couldn't bet them. They... No. A half interest again, your daughter. Uh huh? You heard him with your bet? <laughs> there it is, boys, back to back. Three men. 
Well, you really ain't gonna take a man's only set of teeth, are you? Uh -huh. Yeah, but I gotta use them for eating. Shouldn't have gambled then, man, if you didn't want to lose your teeth. Most of you men have come back to Texas from the war. Found your homes gone, your cattle scattered, and your land stolen by carpetbaggers. There's no market for beef in the South. But there is in Missouri. I want you all to know what you're up against. There's gonna be Indian territory. How bad, I don't know. When we get to Missouri, there'll be border gangs. But we'll get there. Every man who signs on for this drive agrees to finish it. There'll be no quitting along the way. Not by me and not by you. There's no hard feelings if you don't want to go. Trust my wife. You don't have to explain, Bill. It's all right, Dan. Go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to say I want to go. Fine. Yeah, I remember him from the Three Godfathers. It's a lot of cattle. Not a lot of wagons. Take them to Missouri, Matt. <laughs> they say we can't make the drive. It could be wrong. It better be. It's gonna be tough. But they're cowboy tough, so they're gonna make it. Why drive into Missouri? Why not turn west of the red and head them for Kansas? Fine, howdy, ma'am. That'd be heading them for Kansas when the railroad's in Missouri. The railroad in Kansas, too. I saw the one in Topeka, and there's one in Abilene. That's further west. Mm-hmm. If we could head west at the red, we'd shave ourselves a heap of going to Missouri. Yeah, there's gonna be some conflict there over where they should go. By the end of the first two weeks, we'd come over 160 miles. Everything's going too good. I don't like to see things go good or bad. I like them in between. <laughs> it's too good to be true for that guy. He's He knows something's gonna go wrong, and he's probably right. Why don't you use your teeth? You was half human, you give them back to me, you can see I can use them. Besides, you help keep the dust out of my mouth. Keep them mouth shut, the dust not get in. <laughs> Ow! Hey, that hurts! I can still use me a whip and you keep out of that sugar chin. Ouch. What are you stopping them for? The men are beat, they've had a pretty tough day. I think you know I'll do the thinking, keep them going. He always just shuts down Matt's opinion and doesn't really listen to it. Come on, get going! I know this is too good to be true. When we get there, I'll have over a hundred dollars coming. What are you gonna do with it? I'm gonna buy the old Chapman place, and then I'm gonna... <laughs> That's my wife. She she always wanted a little pair of red shoes, and I kind of figured I'd get them for her. Good idea, man. I'll do it. I will. It's too quiet, guys. It's too peaceful. I'm just waiting for something to go wrong. I'm like Mr. Superstitious. I had a little roan horse once, and they... I wish he'd quit a yowling. Bothering the cattle. I hope those cattle don't stampede. I was in a stampede once. Nighthawk sneezed. Just sneezed and the whole bunch was off. They run for six miles before we got them headed. Well. I don't like coyotes. Use your head, Keely. One shot on a night like tonight, you have to start the whole herd running. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Good grief. Oh my gosh. That guy just died, didn't he? Oh my gosh. They're too tired to run anymore. Okay, grief. Well, there was your disaster number one. Right your camp. Next look, I didn't see him. Buster? You seen Latimer? No, uh, not since they started. Where'd you see him last? Dan. Dan was wearing checkered pants, wasn't he? I'll stay here till morning. Darn. Did you find him, Tom? Yeah. Wouldn't want to be that guy. We'll bury him and I'll read over him in the morning about his wife. See that she gets full pay for the whole drive. And uh, get her, uh, well, anything else you can think of. Like a pair of red shoes, maybe. Poor guy. Should have known when we started talking about what he was hoping and dreaming of. His demise was imminent. You started all this. 
Yeah, I did. Tell me it's over three or four hundred heads short. And you killed Dan Latimer. I know that, too. Right Feeling arm. sugar like a kid. Well, they whip kids to teach them better. Well, Mr. Dunson, I was wrong, awful wrong, but nobody's gonna whip me. Turn around, you'll get it in the eye. Don't do it, Mr. Dunson. I tell you, don't do it. Hoo-hoo. Matt was quicker on the draw. Thanks, man. He... He'd have killed me. Yeah. You're fast with that gun, man. Awful fast. But your heart's soft. Too soft. Yeah, it's funny, but he saved that guy's life by shooting him. Because, yeah, Tom probably would have killed him. We had over a solid week of rain. Rain does things to men. Rain and Tom. Because by now, the boys were scared of Tom. I would be. Hey, man, with you? This stuff takes off. Lousy muck. I'd like to tell that Dunson. What was it you wanted to tell Dunson, Sealer? A man can't eat this kind of food. After we lost that other grub wagon, we should have turned back. Even if we had, I couldn't replace what we lost. So you're on short rations and bad coffee. You're gonna be until we finish the drive. You're gonna finish it. I hope he doesn't have a mutiny on his hands eventually. The men was getting awful near mutiny. Tom knew it because, well, because he just kept watching. I scare myself sometimes, guys. When I say something and then five seconds later, boom. <laughs> What the world happened there? My, my neck. It hurts. They, they put a rope around it and spilled it. Grab him. We had nearly 2,000 head of cattle, along with old man Carwood. We got as far as the Wachitas when they jumped us. How many were in that bunch that jumped you out? Oh, maybe a hundred, I guess. A hundred? Why'd they put a rope on you? They did worse than that. They nailed Carwood's feet and hands to a wagon wheel. He was dead when I got to him. Gosh. Want to come along with us? We are too, Missouri. Yeah. No, no, I've had enough. I've had enough too. Unless we try for Abilene. Here comes the mutiny. I don't want to have to kill you, Mailer. With what? Another one bites the dust. Another three. Watch it. I was just getting myself a drink of water. Men are dropping like flies right now. Didn't have to do that back there. You joined in. Yeah, and I thought you were wrong. You think I'm to blame for that? Just as sure as you're sitting there. You got you in the leg, huh? Yeah. It ain't bad. It ain't as bad as it should be. <laughs> he liked that it stuck him, like twisting the knife a little. Gila Laredo and Bill Kelsey are gone. What? They up and left. Mm. We saw some cabbages flower and a mighty salt. They'll probably head straight south. Find them. Bring them back. Supposing they won't come. Bring them. He's not really an inspiring leader. His gruffness is just slowly turning everyone against him. He kind of makes the guys hate him instead of making them be like, we want to follow this man. We respect and admire him. I get that you got to be tough and all that to get where you're going, but like, I feel like he's going a little too far. <laughs> well, here's your red. What a river. Well, this looks like as good a place as any. We'll put them across now. We've got a pretty tired bunch behind us. Tired men don't run away. I feel like that's bad logic. <laughs> Watch him lose somebody in the river. Bring them on, boys! Watch first train! Here we go. So far, so good. Wagons always make me nervous when they're crossing. Well, thank goodness they made it. I was convinced something bad was about to happen, but they faked me out on that one. We just picked up a few strays downstream. All told, we've lost 30 to 40 hit. Oh, so they lost 30 or 40 of them. Not great. We're awful tired. But we won't have to count noses in the morning. Matt disapproves again. You need sleep, Tom. Some nights ago, we lost three men. I haven't slept since, and we haven't lost any more. Again, that's bad logic. If you don't sleep, you're gonna go crazy, and then you're gonna be an even worse leader. Gonna be even harder and meaner to everybody. We could have waited till morning instead of finishing after dark. Don't make sense. We got a long way to go yet. Sometimes I think he's going plumb out of his head. If you feel that way, what do you tell me for? Matt was, like, secretly thinking the exact same thing. Get on off them horses. I don't favor looking up to the likes of you. Hello to you, too. <laughs> I know what you're gonna do to us, but first I want to tell you something. You want to get this herd to market? Well, so do all of us. 
I signed the pledge, sure, but you ain't the man I signed it with. Now you can get your Bible and read over us after you shoot us. I'm gonna hang you. Dude. <laughs> John Wayne's turning into a straight up villain in this movie. He should have just let them leave. Everybody's turned on him now. You want to finish the drive? Where are we going? Aveline. Who's heading it? I am. What about Dunson? He stays here. You was wrong, Mr. Dunson. I've been with you a lot of years. Go on with him. Thanks for making it easy on me. All right, man, I'll be coming with you. Well, I mean, they're doing what needed to be done. He was going off the rails. Something had to be done. Something drastic, in his case. If there's any chance at all, we'll get you hurt, Dabbling. Sherry was right. You're soft. You should have let him kill me, because I'm going to kill you. I don't know when, but I'll catch up. Every time you turn around, expect to see me. There's one time you'll turn around, and I'll be there. After all they've been through, and after all Matt has done for him, he has the nerve to say that to him. I am Team Matt all the way. <laughs> so they took Tom's herd away from him. We went on with everybody looking over their shoulders, watching for Tom. Well, this was a plot twist. He'd be a fool to come alone. And again, he might. Most likely he'll ride back and get men and cartridges. What do you think will happen when he does come back, man? Yeah, I've been wondering, too. You couldn't let him hang Taylor and Laredo. He was wrong. Hope I'm right. Hope there's a railroad in Abilene. There is. There is a railroad in Abilene. If you can just get there. <laughs> Matt, look at this. Uh-oh. That's trouble. How the hell do we go on? Well, which would you rather have? What's behind? Or what might be ahead? Neither is looking too good right now. You and Buster, go on ahead about 10, 12 miles. Enough to give warning. Three more days pass. <laughs> it's Buster. Women and coffee, I tell you. I see them. I have no. Where was all this? Oh, about uh, 15, 18 miles north of here. We're going together and taking the herd with us. That's fair enough. Two days, we'll all have a cup of coffee. Buster's mood made a heap of difference in the boys. Nobody had to tell him to hurry now. Yeah. Oh no, this wagon train too? They're all circled up. What do they always yell for? I don't know. Y'all should help them. Laredo? Yep. Well, you get the men. Four of us will go on in. As you go in, we'll come out from the wagons and meet you. I'll shoot till you have to. Oh boy. <laughs> Whoa. Talking about going in guns blazing. Shooting high. Aim lower. I probably am. I'm no good. Stop wasting time. Hold what are you Lady, this is not the time for flirtatious banter. <laughs> Lives are at stake. I thought I told you to stay down. You did. Why didn't you? Because I got up. She's being so chill about this. Oh my gosh. I would not be acting that chill if I had an arrow sticking out of my shoulder. This woman has an off the charts pain tolerance. She's like having a conversation. Da da da. Arrow to the shoulder just keeps talking. No big deal. You're gonna hurt. Like they say, this will hurt you more than it does me. No, this will hurt you. <laughs> you were right. Got blood on your cheek. It's gonna make you faint. Not until I've done something I've been wanting to do. He gets the arrow out of her shoulder. But what does he get for it? She slaps him. <laughs> just for the heck of it. What's his name, Cherry? Matthew Garth. Hey, Groot. Come here. He's Groot. He knows more about Matt than anyone else. What did you want to know? Anything you can tell me, Groot. See, I met Matt today just after he rode in. Didn't get along very well, and I want to find out why. Well, lady, y'all were in the middle of a firefight, for one thing. <laughs> why was he so mad and uptight during the middle of a firefight with Indians? Can't imagine why. Oh, no. Hold it. Right there. It's all right, Buster. It's me, Matt. Oh, I thought it was Tom. <laughs> That's his story. More about him. Yeah. What? We didn't get to hear it? Come on. <laughs> I wanted to hear about Matt's secret past. I mean, I know about Matt's history with regards to the people dying in a wagon train, but she seemed to think he was mad at her because of her occupation. So I'm like, what what secrets in his past? Was his mom a prostitute or something? Like what what gives? Groot said I'd find you here. I, I wanted to talk to you. You're shaking. You thought I was Dunson. 
Exactly. How did you I know? I know a little bit about it, Groot told me, but I know how you feel. I, I'm scared, too. That's why I'm talking, because it's the best thing to do when you feel that way. I talk to myself, even if I have to sit in front of a mirror and talk. There is such a thing as talking too much, though. I'd really like to talk to you. I like it better than talking to a mirror. I want to know more about him. I took his herd away from him. You love him, don't you? He must love you. That wouldn't be hard. They move very quickly, these two. Will you do that again? I kept having a bad feeling like Tom was going to show up in the middle of that and, like, kill him or something. <laughs> I have a feeling, like, that this is going to end tragically, but I could be wrong. But I'm feeling it. It's raining hard in the hills. The river's rising. You sure don't want to get stuck on this side. That's what I was thinking. Hey, Matt, Jerry was just saying it's raining hard. Yeah, I heard it. We're leaving now. We can't take her with us, can we? No, I don't suppose we could. Uh, he's just gonna up and leave, like Tom did back in the day. We started after us. Oh, no. Tom's got his own group. Trail heard through here a while back. That's right. When? Gone eight days now. You and your men can split around. We'll feed you. Thanks, I... I'll take care of Mr. Dunson. How did you know my name? The man you promised to kill. You feel better after you eat. We'll talk then. How'd you get that away from me? I got it in the rain, before he took your herd across that river and left. I'll get you another drink. So he went off and left you? Yeah. I wanted to go with him. Said I wasn't strong enough to go, and nothing I could do or say would make him change his mind. Yeah, that sounds familiar. I wanted him so much that... That you I... felt like you had knives sticking in you. I thought I had a son. I haven't, and I want one. What would you say if, if I offered you half of everything I own for a son? What? Half of everything you've got. That's right. Talk about playing both sides. <laughs> you can take that gun out of the sling, though. When did you fall in love Helen, with her? When did you fall in love with her? Who? The one you left walked out of. You knew how I felt when he left me. I want to go on with you, please. This is so strange. We'll start early. I'll be ready. I mean, I know relationships happened fast in the Old West, but like she loves Matt, but then she meets Tom and she's like, I don't want you to hurt Matt, so I'll go with you and I'll be with you and I'll have your child because I love him. <laughs> oh my gosh. Did you hear something? I didn't hear nothing. I heard it. Oh. They're yelling down on the point. There's the railroad. We're looking for Abilene. Mister, I sure am glad to see you. I sure am. You can take the shortcut there. It's about 12 miles. Good grief. That is so many cattle. Welcome to Abilene. Who's in charge? I am. Matthew Clark. We're sure glad to see you, Mr. Guy. What's the best way to this stockyard? Driving straight through town. There's little Abilene. Traffic jam. I'm the Greenwood Trading Company of Illinois. I'd like to buy your beef. What's your price? Would you make me an offer? Twenty dollars. A head? It's a lot of money. It's like you're gonna buy yourself a lot of beef, Mr. <laughs> Melville. I'll draw up a contract and have it ready for you tonight. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I know they have to split it amongst a lot of guys, but they're gonna be rich. <laughs> Crossed here, all right. Not over four or five hours ahead. But they might also be dead. Here's a check to Thomas Dunson for fifty thousand dollars. You see, I've taken the credit here for the money he wanted to pay off your men. I suppose they'd be celebrating. When do you expect to be leaving, Matt? I don't exactly know. You're going to wait for Dunson, huh? Isn't that check and the fact that you got here? Isn't that going to make any difference? I don't think so, Mr. Melville. Good night, Mr. Melville. I'm scared, guys. Oh, boy. He's camped two or three miles outside of town. He says he'll be here just after sunup. He says he's going to kill you. He hasn't changed his mind, Matthew. You better tell him what you told Tom. I was going to ask you to run, but it wouldn't do any good. You're too much like him. Oh, stop me, Matthew. Stop me. <laughs> Lord, guys. <laughs> oh, gosh. Here he comes. You know that young man isn't going to use his gun, don't you? Yeah. But I haven't any such notion. Mr. Dunson. Mr. Dunson. I'll say it just one more time. Oh my gosh. 
Won't anything make a man out of you? You once told me never to take your gun away from you. Kill him, Billy. Kick him, liver. This is not how I thought this was going to go down. Stop it, you fool. Stop it. You, Dunson, pretending you're going to kill him. And you, Matthew Garth, getting your face all beat up and all bloody. Anybody with half a mind would know you two love each other. No, don't stay still. I changed my mind. Go ahead. Beat each other crazy. Maybe it'll put some sense in both of you. Use this. No, you can't. It's his. <laughs> you better marry that girl, Matt. <laughs> When are you going to stop telling people what to do? Right now. As soon as I tell you one thing more. When we get back to the ranch, I want you to change the brand. Red River D. And we'll add an end to it. You don't mind that, do you? No. You've earned it. Y'all, I'm shocked. Oh my gosh. They're just cool. All of a sudden. All right, we're cool. We cool, bro. We cool. <laughs> oh my gosh. Y'all, I was so not prepared for that. <laughs> I was getting all geared up for this intense final showdown. Like, I thought it was probably going to be a gun duel and one of them was going to die and the other one was going to walk away or maybe both of them were going to die. I did not know. I mean, they were, like, setting up this really dramatic encounter. <laughs> and then they're just, like, bro handshake. We're good. <laughs> and I love... See, to be honest... The lady, I don't know what her name was. I was not a fan of her at all, like playing both sides. And I was like, obviously she loves Matt, even though she's met him like one time, but she obviously loved him. But then she was like telling Tom, I'll have your son and all this stuff. And I'm like, what is going on? And I was like, not really a fan. But then she's the one who just calls them out at the end, how absolutely ridiculous they're being and how they actually love each other. They're like father and son. She calls out how absolutely ridiculous they're being and makes them come to their senses and not beat the crap out of each other, <laughs> not kill each other. And so then I suddenly became a fan of her for calling them out, being like, you guys are idiots. She got massive points in my book for doing that. <laughs> And I love how Tom just goes, you ought to marry that girl. And Matt's like, when are you going to stop telling me what to do? It was just so funny. And I think it was even more funny because, like, I was mentally and emotionally all geared up for this super serious, like, potentially tragic ending. And then it suddenly, it was like the icebreaker moment of, like, comedic ending. And I was totally not expecting it. But I'm pleasantly surprised because, I mean... I've told you guys, I love a good tragedy, but I always prefer a happy ending if possible. So I was pleasantly surprised. I'm like, thank goodness, because that is not at all how, how I thought that was going to turn out. And I'm also feeling a little bit better about it now because I was like, man, this John Wayne character is like the opposite of the archetype he always plays. He's usually, I mean, he's usually very grumpy and kind of can rub you the wrong way, but he's usually a good guy trying to help, trying to do the right thing. Even though he's very often like ornery and stuff like that and kind of gruff, uh, he's usually playing a good guy. In this movie, he was kind of straight up a bad guy, like at least maybe like 70% bad, 30% good. Like he had some good qualities, but he was just shooting people throughout the movie. And I'm like, man, you don't just kill people because they decide they don't want to stay on the cattle drive with you. Like this is not war. They are not deserters that you like need to kill or something. <laughs> he was just, he was not the best leader. Matt was much better. And that was another surprise for me in this movie. I was kind of expecting John Wayne's character to be more at the forefront. And it was like his story and he was the hero. But it was really like Matt's story. And kind of a much more of an arc and a journey for Matt. Like seeing him grow into... Like go from boy to man and learn how to become a, a leader and not just blindly follow Tom the whole time and let him tell him what to do. He learned to stand up for himself and then eventually lead the guys on to Abilene and say like, hey, we don't need to go to Missouri. We need to go to Abilene. Like seeing him mature and grow in that way. 
It ended up becoming much more his story. And then coming to terms with the father figure in his life who he had butted heads with and confronted and then them resolving that issue. It was a really interesting story and not at all. I mean, I didn't know what to expect because I knew nothing about this movie. So I was really surprised by how much I liked Matt and was actually more interested in his character (laughs) and what was going to happen to him than John Wayne's character. Although once they split up and Tom swore vengeance, I was like so invested like to see what was going to happen there between those two and how that was going to resolve or not resolve. So yeah, that was a really uh, interesting story that took some twists and turns that I was not expecting and I really enjoyed it. So thank you guys so much for watching and coming along this ride with me. I kept being like, where is this going? How is this going to turn out? I have no clue. And It kept surprising me all the way to the end, but it was a pleasant surprise. I really, really enjoyed it. So thank you so much to everybody who suggested it to me. I forgot to look in the credits to see who played Matt because I did not recognize him. I've watched a lot of Westerns at this point, so I didn't recognize him. I don't think I know the actor, but I'm sure if I've seen him in something, you guys will tell me in the comments and I'll be like, oh yeah, because I definitely recognize the actor who played, I think his name was Groot. I think that's what they were saying. Maybe that's my Marvel brain working. I don't know. But the guy who played Groot, I 100% recognized, of course, from Rio Bravo, who uh, he played John Wayne's like buddy in that movie too. And he was so funny in Rio Bravo. I'll never forget that. Um, I definitely recognized him. I think it was Walter something, the actor's name. But I really enjoyed him again in this movie. I'm getting to where I'm starting to recognize more of the like classic era, old school Western actors, slowly but surely. I'm starting to recognize and become familiar with more of them instead of just the, you know, the big icons like Clint Eastwood or John Wayne. I'm starting to recognize more of the the guys who filled those supporting roles in so many of the classic westerns back then. So, um let me know, have I seen Matt's actor before or have I not? Cuz sometimes I lose track, but I really really enjoyed him a whole lot. He really carried the movie in a lot of ways so yeah I really really enjoyed him he did a fantastic job with all of the nuances of his character and I'm glad he survived really really glad (laughs) thank you guys so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this reaction be sure to check out the description below hit the link if you want to head on over to my patreon and watch the full length reaction the full length watch along and be sure to like this video if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't And I will see you guys next week for another Film Friday. Bye, guys.